Well, welcome to the Aging Boomers. I'm your host, Frank Sampson, where we discuss so many of the issues facing boomers, their parents, and of course, is an aging population. And I just want to thank all of our listeners uh, for all the uh, just checking in on iTunes and listening. We're, we're thrilled that uh, iHeartRadio ex- uh, has uh, open the doors to our podcast, so we're also on iHeartRadio. So you could go to iTunes, search for the Aging Boomers, iHeartRadio, search for the Aging Boomers, or of course, just go to our website at uh, theagingboomers.com. A lot of different ways to subscribe and give us your comments, and we've gotten some great ones, so we really appreciate it. Um, I want to let you know we have a couple sponsors today. First is Senior Care Authority. Uh, a company uh, that assists families in finding assisted living, independent living, uh, dementia care throughout the country. And we have advisors all over the country. So um, uh, if you have interest in talking to an advisor, you could go to SeniorCareAuthority.com or contact us at 888 at uh, 888- Eight 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 uh wait eight six six seven one seven two four seven seven. I'll say it again, eight six six seven one seven two four seven seven and uh we'll be happy to help. Also uh we have a sponsor, eldercare resources USA dot com. Uh, information for an aging world, enjoy informative articles, watch videos, download helpful guides, and learn from nationally recognized experts and connect with key local providers. You can go to eldercareresourcesusa.com, and of course our podcast is uh, highlighted on their website. If you're in the west at the West Coast, uh, uh, there's local sites um, uh, for elder care resources. That's ECR, the initials Elder Care Resources, ECRBayArea.com, ECRLosAngeles.com, and ECRSacramento.com. So check it out. Uh, so I, I want to get to our uh, our guest today, uh, someone uh, here in uh, Sonoma area where we're based. His name is Mark Nielsen, and uh Mark uh, trained as a chef from Washburn Chef Training in Chicago, has been a chef for many years, along with owning his own restaurants in the Midwest. He is currently executive director for Sonoma Hills Retirement Living and has been so for, it's been there, how long have you been there? About 12 years or so? I've been here for 12 years as the chef for 11 years and as the director for almost one year now, Frank. Oh, Wow. So that's 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 great. So um, it's it's a wonderful place, and we're not only going to talk about Sonoma Hills today, but we want to just you know we want to talk about senior independent living. You know, we, we all know the uh, the statistics, and more and more people um, moving from their homes uh, to other locations, and uh, there's many people out there that can still live independently, but uh, Want, want to be part of a community. So how would you classify Sonoma Hills, Mark, as a more independent living? I know it's called Sonoma Hills Retirement Living. Is it? Are those two terms kind of used synonymously, or what would you say? Oh, I believe they fit right together as far as senior independent living. We are 80 rental apartments, and we have 80 uh, garden-type apartments. Um, and our rental apartments, we have amenities, of course, that we do for our seniors, um, uh, including free meals a day, uh, many other things that are included in this, but they are senior rental apartments. Okay. And do you get uh, a number of couples? Are they usually people whose maybe spouse has passed on? What, what's kind of the mix generally? Uh, we a- actually have kind of a mix. We do have a number of couples, and the number of couples is actually increasing over the 12 years that I've been here. Um, we do have um, uh, people that are single. We have people whose spouses have passed, and, and they're kind of alone in their homes, and they're looking to be with other people perhaps in a nice, friendly community. And I think that's what a, a retirement community offers is 
Uh, you've got friends, you've got neighbors, you've got people that you can do things with, people you eat meals with, instead of just being home alone all the time. So have you found that, um, I know that, uh, as you know, we, I have an, uh, company that works, um, a lot with families that need assisted living or need, um, some sort of memory care. And usually it's the adult children that are, um, kind of involved in that decision-making, uh, with independent living are the, is it usually the seniors themselves making their own decisions on a move like that, or you deal with the adult children quite often as well? Uh, we deal with the children, of course. You know, when people move into a retirement uh, community like ours, you know, they're usually in pretty good shape and, you know, getting around fine, and through the years perhaps there are some issues which may be anything from from hips to knees to God only knows what, and some people require some assistance as time goes along. And we allow those people to hire independent caregiving companies to come in and help those people, whether it be a, a med help or, some, or a shower help or whatever that help may be. So that's up to those people to hire those people independently to come in and help them out. All right. I guess um, it's pretty much an apartment uh it's just that they have easy access to various services and law and getting their if they want get their laundry done for them uh meals are cooked for them and obviously um, great meals uh, with your background so it, what would be the types of services um give some examples of services that sonoma hills uh provides and and just give us your thoughts on are those pretty basic as far as other types of independent living communities around the country would provide or are they quite different between them well you know of course we live in sonoma california which is a definite plus frank right uh, what we do offer at sonoma hills is we offer 24-hour security uh, the most important thing to me in our community here at Sonoma Hills is the comfort and the safety of the people that live here. So we do offer the 24-hour security. Um, each apartment uh, has their own individual uh, heating and air conditioning uh, controls. We do have restaurant-style meals. We cook everything from scratch here. And I think as time goes along in retirement, living, I think you're going to see a lot more of that. Uh, we make stocks to make our soups. We bake all our own desserts here. As a matter of fact, we just had a big planting project this year at Sonoma Hills where we have planted apples, pears, plums, figs, strawberries, peaches, lemons, oranges. So we actually grow a lot of our own food right here. Uh, we grow a lot of our own herbs right here. So I think it's very important that people don't get convenience foods that are full of chemicals. Uh, we're very conscious of that here. It's very important to us here. Um, we also have a private dining room, with, which is very nice for family get-togethers. Uh, we cater not only parties here, but we cater throughout the community. Um, we, all of our apartments here do have full-size kitchens. Uh, not that anybody needs them. Don't need to cook for yourself because we love to do that for you. But that, you know, especially for ladies, of course, just to get that feel of, of being at home with, with the kitchen, I think, is very important. Uh, we do have weekly housekeeping services where we clean your apartment once a week. We love small pets here. We have an exercise workout room, which is used more and more all the time. So as we talk about uh, seniors and aging and the time factor as we go along here, I think those kinds of things. I think more exercise programs. We also have a program with our, our local uh, park point uh, where people can go over there and use the facility there. And I have seen in the 12 years that I have been here far more people utilizing that. And then let me use a, a quick example here if I could. Sure. 12 years ago, a very popular meal here was meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Well, today people don't accept so much meatloaf and mashed potatoes, not that there's anything wrong with that, but they're looking more towards um, salads and healthier meals. Um, and we're also very conscious of organic. And there's a lot of people that think you can live longer and live better eating organic, and we're more moving towards organic. So I think the future of, of retirement living is is more towards uh, heading towards eating better, working out better, taking better care of ourselves, living longer and better. Yeah, no, it, it, that is a 
a positive trend uh, moving forward. And I'm sure, you know, in your travels, you've probably maybe visited other um, independent living communities. Do you think that there's a lot of similarities or, I mean, in Sonoma, it's, it's certainly unique. Like you said, all the fresh veg vegetables, you grow so much of it yourself right there. And that's probably unique to this area. But uh, as far as the general services that are provided, would you, would you say they're pretty similar? I would say we are pretty similar. We're uh, in the Sonoma Valley. We are the only sole retirement community. Now, we have other communities here that offer memory care. We have other communities that offer assisted living. So, and those are necessary, of course. But the only difference, I think, with Sonoma Hills is we are totally retirement here. So, we do not offer the assisted. Um, so, as far as what we do in, in, in Comparison to other retirement communities, I think that we are on the same level. I think that we have the advantage here of uh, we have the Sonoma hometown feel, which is very nice. But as time goes along, uh, as all businesses evolve, ours will evolve with it also. That's great. That's great. Uh, the from an activity standpoint, what, give our listeners some examples of the types of activities that are done not only inside your community, but maybe even taking people out. Uh, can you give some? Uh, we do take people out. We, we do weekly trips. We do everything from uh, last Thursday, we went to Spring Lake and we cooked out filet mignons on the grill. We take trips to San Francisco, to museums, to points of interest. We go to wineries. Um, so we do take many trips here. Um, we also have many in-house activities. We have everything from uh, entertainment from singers and dancers to guest speakers coming. Of course, there's bingo. We love bingo under our retirement <laughs> community, and I think right. all of them. So that certainly goes on. But there's a lot of daily activities. We do Zumba. We do exercise classes. We try to keep people engaged. So those people who want to stay active can certainly stay active here. Uh, if somebody just tuned in like about a minute ago, they think they're talking about a cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> Love the sound of that. Yeah, yeah. And, and what about people that, you know, they're there, but they kind of like to be to themselves, and uh, they still have that opportunity to kind of do their own thing as well, right? I mean, they don't necessarily, they don't feel pressured to participate if they don't want to. Absolutely not. Again, these are retirement apartments, so people can do whatever they wish. If they want to be involved in the activities, that's fine. If they want to stay home in front of the TV, that's fine, of course, also. And, you know, it takes all types, of course. And we have people from all over the world living here, very interesting people. And uh, it's just, it's fun for the people to get out. Many people, when they first enter a retirement community such as Sonoma Hills, they're scared, of course. You know, this is a big change of life. A lot of them are just downsizing out of a home and moving into an apartment. That's a big move, too, of course. But I see it all the time. Once they get in and get talking to people, many people who are in the same life predicament that they are in, it opens them up. Uh, it's like a whole new life, and it, it's an exciting life. It's, it's not a, an end-of-life thing, and, it, and, it, and it, it's an exciting new life to these people. We have a social hour here every uh, Friday from 4.30 to 5.30 where we serve wine and hors d'oeuvres, and almost everybody comes down. And it's great to see people talking to people you, you don't ordinarily see them talking to, and these are people engaging, and it's just awesome. That's great. The... the um you know, you've been there a long time, so I, I know you've met with a lot of families that uh, have moved in or considered, you know, Sonoma Hills as an option. Uh, what would you say some of the top reasons are uh, for someone considering retirement living? I think if anybody is ready to take that step to retirement living for whatever the circumstance, they should uh, just look at the environment. They should look at the environment to see that it is clean, that it smells good, that it's friendly, and that it appears safe. And most importantly, does it meet my needs? Am I where I want to be? Am I close to family? Am I close to uh, whatever kind of shopping I like to do? Does it meet your needs? Uh, am I comfortable there? Do I feel comfortable there? 
um, all very important. The the environment is it clean? Is it friendly? And so, if they come there, what do you usually hear from from the families uh, or the husband and wife? They say we're looking at this because is are they saying that they're just tired of cleaning their house? They don't want to cook anymore. What are some of those? Top reasons you think they uh, uh, top of the list for considering a move like this? Well, I, I think that has a lot to do with it. Of course, uh, just the fact of uh, I'm getting tired of gardening, I'm getting tired of cooking. Um, I've worked hard all my life. Why should I continue working like this? We like to say here, we like to offer you the best because you deserve it. You've worked your whole life for this. Let us pamper you now. You don't have to hammer any more nails. You don't have to, to cook anymore. Let us do this for you. You can relax. You can do what you want with life. You can go out shopping during the day. You can do anything you want all day long. We'll cook for you. We'll clean for you. We'll do whatever it takes to make you happy and comfortable. Um, there you go. What, what uh, percentage of your residents approximately are still driving? Um, we have, I would say, approximately 20% of our residents are still driving. Oh, great. That's good. Yeah. Uh, and another advantage to our community, if you uh, live here and still driving, get your own parking curb close to your apartment. There you go. There you go. Um, so let, let's talk about situations where maybe a resident isn't a right fit, okay, to move in. Um how do you handle that, and what what could be some reasons where it, you know maybe an independent living isn't the right fit for a particular person, and how do you deal with that? You know, in the twelve years that I've been here, I've seen uh, a change actually in, in our community. Where twelve years ago there were people with physical ailments. It seems now we have more mental ailments than physical ailments. Um, I'll give you one example. We had this lovely lady who just wanted to move to Sonoma Hills real bad. And her son in Nevada said, no, she's got the onset of Alzheimer's, and I don't think this is the right setting for her. Her mom, just she just wanted to be here so bad. So we let her try, you know, and, and she lived here for, oh, about six months, and she was very happy here. She lived a good six months here, and, and then her, her son realized, you know, this was progressing, it was just time, and he lived in Nevada, and he wanted her mom, his mom, close to him. So, you know, he came down, and, and we packed up, and we had a little party before she left. But, you know, there are times when people move in, and they just have to move on from here. But, um, again, if people, uh, we do have caregiving services. They come in for hourly checks or whatever that may be. So... Does that answer your question, Frank? Yeah, yeah, no, it it does. I know those are tough situations. Um, so I'm just wondering, you know, how how you deal with that uh, at you know at your uh, your community. Um, there's a lot of family involvement, without question. A lot of family involvement, and there's nobody likes to leave Sonoma Hills and and or retirement and going on to assisted in nursing. Uh, everybody would like to stay where they are, but sometimes it's just not possible. And and through the family involvement and uh, the, every situation is unique, of course. Um, but we try to make people as comfortable as possible. You know, and I've I've certainly interviewed on the show uh, marketing directors, executive directors of assisted living facilities and memory care, you know, even smaller care homes, and and I've been to so many of them and. You know, when you walk into uh, a community that's more assisted living or memory care, obviously people are a little more frail, more walkers, more wheelchairs. Uh, and you walk in an independent living and you're not going to see as much of that. There'll be some of it, but not as much. And I think a resident uh, would rather live <laughs> when they see everybody more independent. But and it, it's a fit for many, but not everybody. Not everybody. So, yeah, it's absolutely. Just, and you know, it, it is scary for some people to to walk into retirement. It's very scary to walk into assisted sometimes. Um, but these are the situations we face. And um, as far as retirement goes, uh, I believe that we offer the best, Frank. Yeah. No, I, you do. You you guys do a great job. 
what, what, what type of flexibility uh, do they have as far as, you know, listen, you've been a chef and that's, you know, an area of expertise that you've had over the years. Uh, food is an important thing to everybody, but it's, you know, I, I just know with seniors, it's very, you know, it's just very important. And uh, they may be used to home cooked meals. And so how does, how do you work that transition? What type of flexibility do people have? Well, I want, I only want it made this way or that way, or I'm gluten free or uh, whatever the case may be. Um, how, how do you deal with that? Uh, of course, every person here is the most impor important person here. Um, and as people are coming in, I sit and talk with them, uh, get to know their likes, their wants, their needs. I get to know their um, what they have eaten to, through their life, uh, what part of the country or world uh, they are from, and what they are used to eating. Uh, we do, as time goes along, we do have more gluten-free people, um, and we cook gluten-free for them. Diabetes, of course, is a big issue, and sugar. Um, we do sugar-free desserts, sugar-free ice creams. Um, and we do have people that do have special wants and needs, and we slip those in every time. Yeah. So if they want, uh, I mean, it, generally you have a, a menu of a number of different things and specials each day. Is that, I mean, similar to kind of a restaurant-style type of a thing? Yes, exactly. We have uh, we do have a weekly menu. Um, uh, let's say for today, for example, we have a sautéed trout fillet with a homemade pesto pasta and fresh cauliflower. So that is our main entree of the day. We have an alternative. Today's happens to be a sautéed chicken livers with mushrooms and onions. And then we have a menu on the table that people can also pick from. So there's many options, many varieties. And if that doesn't make someone happy, then we'll do something else. Um, we also have a soup and salad bar every day, and I already mentioned that we make stocks to make our soups. Our salad bar contains many organic items every day. We write on a chalkboard what those organic items are so everybody knows who wants organic. Uh, that is available in organic, so there's many, many options that are available to our seniors every day. Made me, and now you're making me hungry. Um. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over, Frank. So I, I know you touched on this as far as uh, what, you know, how people should, you know, looking at options and things like that if they're looking at uh, various communities. And uh, I know Sonoma is a smaller town. There may not be as many options. But if uh, someone that's listening is in a larger community and there are more options, what recommendations would you give to them? What types of questions uh, do you recommend they ask when they're touring? Um, what things should they watch out for? Uh, any any words of wisdom to our listeners who may be considering this now? Number one, when you walk in the door, make sure it is clean. Make sure it is friendly. Uh, make sure there is somebody at the front desk that takes care of your immediate needs. And does it appear safe? Has the, uh, the staff been there for a very short time, or has the staff been there for a long time? For example, most of our staff here has all been here over 10 years. So we know the feel of the place. We know the people. We know what they want. We get to know these people and their families. And it is like a family situation. Um, and I think that's very important. Uh, people are not just a number here. Uh, our, our community, we're fortunate enough just to have 80 apartments, so we're not huge, and we get to know everybody on a personal basis. And I think that's very important uh, at this stage of life for people to uh, feel welcome and feel comfortable. Uh, is it a welcoming place? Um, and look at the food. Go in and have a meal. I mean, does it taste fresh? Does, you know, is this what you want to eat for the rest of your life? Um, you know, go in and, and get a true feel for the place, a true tour, uh, a meal, tour the whole place, um, spend the night there if you can. We offer that to our people. If they like to spend the night and get a feel for the place, that's perfectly fine. So get a true feel for the place and talk to some of the residents, see what they have to say. Yeah, it's a thing. Go right up to them and say, how long have you been here? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll, yes, exactly. They'll tell it like it is. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and what about like 
could there be extra charges that they should be asking about? And again, it might be similar uh, with different independent communities, or I'm sure there's differences as well, but uh, what, what are things you could advise to kind of ask about? Is it more for this or is it more for that or is it all included? What are the types of things? You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, we have this monthly expense comparison between like living in a home, your own home, and living in a retirement community. And when you figure everything out from heat and water and garbage removal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which you don't have to pay for any of those things here, cost-wise, many times you're, you're better off in a retirement community than you are in your own home. Um, as far as extra cost, yeah, you have to watch for that, of course. Um, the only extra cost we have, you know, we do transportation around Sonoma, of course, free of charge. If we have to go way out of town, we'll charge a little bit per hour for that. Um, if somebody wants to bring in guests for a meal, of course, there's a charge for that. Um, but that's it. You know, if, everything else uh, is all included in the rental price. Uh, uh, look at that rental agreement. Make sure everything is stated on there very clearly, of course, because you should only have one price unless you want the extra amenities to pay for Good point. So, Mark, you know, for those people that are in Northern California and want to check out uh, Sonoma Hills, how would they go about doing that? Uh, go to uh, Sonoma Hills Retirement Online would be great. Uh, call 707-939-7856 would be great. Drive in for a tour anytime would be wonderful also. Yeah, it's a wonderful place. You're doing a great job there. Mark Nielsen, uh, Executive Director at Sonoma Hills Retirement Living. Uh, Mark, thanks so much for joining us on The Aging Boomers. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Frank. Have a great day. Thanks. You as well. And thank you all for joining us uh, on The Aging Boomers. Uh, I'm sure many of you are listening on on the free app. I didn't mention that earlier. We have an Aging Boomers app that you can get on your iPhone or on your Android phone. Go to agingboomers.com. Uh, send the link right over to friends uh, right from uh, iHeartRadio or iTunes. So many different options out there to to listen to the show. And thanks so much for all your support. Be safe out there. And we will talk to you all very soon. <laughs>